Ever since the chequered flag flew on last year's V8 Ute Series in Sydney, the field has been busy planning and replanning for the new season. And part of that, for some, has included a jump over the fence. In a Jamie Winkup-like switch, longtime Ford fighter Leighton Cranbrook has crushed Blue Oval fans by rocking up in a new Commodore. The question is, can he replicate Winkup's success? Um, I think we'll find out when it comes to race one. We really don't know. It's an unknown package on a racetrack like this yet. And um, we've done a few days of testing in it and it looks promising, so we'll know today. But the 2008 champion will have to overcome the current champ, Jack Ellsgood, if he's to reclimb the Ute Hill. So how will Jack respond to the added weight of expectation now he's carrying the number one plate? Well, actually, I feel like right now there's no pressure because I've put that much pressure on myself, especially last year when I've, you know, come runner-up, you know, three times before. I really feel like the pressure's lifted and uh, I'm just going to go out there and enjoy myself for a change. Technical issues and various eligibility wrangles choked out Gary Baxter's hopes last year. But he hopes that a new season starting on home soil will be much kinder. I raced here uh, a few times when the Grand Prix was here, so and the Le Mans race as well. So I've probably done more laps around here than, uh, than most of the other drivers. So I don't know, I just really like the street circuit. You can really attack it really hard, and, um, and it's fairly rewarding if you do, if you get it right. There are some new faces joining in the fun this year, as well as a cast of regulars that remain loyal to the category. But regardless of where you come from or which badge you wear, it's still going to be every driver for themselves once they hit the track. Cars on track for race two of the weekend and the regular drivers are now back behind the wheel, but some of them haven't been looked after as they probably expected. The Armour All Pole Position Award for the weekend in terms of the regular drivers goes to series debutant David Cedars stepping out of the Fujitsu series and into a ute and picking up a thousand dollars. He'll start on the front row alongside the former champion Grant Johnson, Jack Ellsgood and Gary Baxter on row two and a lot of the familiar ute faces at the front of the field. Certainly that but how good is it to see a debutant on pole position, a rookie on pole position, and behind him are two or three series champions. 29 other blokes wouldn't agree with you, I'm afraid. Charlie Kovacs, new backing from Wilson Security for him this season. Peter Burnett starting back in 23rd in the car that Chris Pitha drove. Dennis Cribben's car, too badly damaged to be repaired. It's out for the rest of the weekend. Craig Dondas and Leanne Tanner have had all sorts of problems. They'll start down near the back of the field and there is George Elliott in the Victoria Coffee Commodore. Great to have George back in the series this weekend. Cedars to the left, Johnson to the right, it's white versus black, Ford versus Holden, first chicane's coming, I can't look. I can't talk. <laughs> look at that. The Holden has smoked the Ford off the line, Cedars perhaps a little bit nervous, Grant Johnson, series regular, knows what's expected but look back through the field. Oh, I get scared when they go through this turn, bouncing off that curb at turn two, when all four wheels are off, off the ground, when they land, it's an unknown. There's Ryle Harris, bit of a lock-up down at turn four. Pacemaker in car with Andrew Fisher. That's Kim Jane, wrong side, Kim. But if he can stay there, it becomes the inside for the next one. The nose is still in the gap. And the Commodore takes the spot. And you just heard another spot gone. Oh, that car's been in the wars. But you heard Andrew Fisher's car bounce off the rev limiter just as he braked for turn five. That just allowed Kim Jane to just get that couple of extra metres and slip it on the inside. You can almost sense that extra speed that the regulars are carrying through turn eight versus the legends. We saw a quick shot of car 14, Brad Patton, in his car after Robbie Madison. Did a number on it in race one and didn't have a straight panel. They've had to put a new diff in it, a new gearbox, new engine mounts. Do you reckon they'll have him back? I would. Did you see that post-race interview? But anyway, back at the front, David Cedars has made amends for his bad start all over the back of Grant Johnson into the last turn. Oh, Andrew Fisher. That was a massive over-rev on the down change by Andrew Fisher. The valves in that Ford engine would be screaming. And it's left him vulnerable to Leighton Cranbrook, who has got to run down the inside. Kim Jane and Ryle Harris, first chicane side by side. Someone has to yield, and it's Ryle. 
Good boy, Ryle. Ryle Harris of two years ago would not have yielded. He would have been in the fence. Ah, but it sets him up to have another lunge here at turn four. Speak of the over ref, how's Kimbo on the down change? These guys are so punishing on these engines on the down change. That is huge. Ah, but they can cop it. They're huge. Look at Grant Johnson, though. The 07 champion has got David Cedars right on his hammer now. The Cedars team are preparing this car, the Andrew Fisher car, and also Ben Dunn Storage King Falcon. So they're very busy this weekend. They've clearly got a fast car in this one. Fast car and a fast driver. David Cedars has done a lot of miles in V8 Supercar in the Fujitsu Series. He's made a step back to V8 Utes, and he's showing what he can do at this level of racing. A great new shot for our coverage this year. The run through Turn 8. So Johnson leads, then Cedar, Gary Baxter back in, a repaired Commodore. Then it's Gary McDonald, Jack Ellsgood. And these guys are just getting stuck into it. Kim Jane, Layton Cranbrook, Andrew Fisher, Ryle Harris, Brad Patton showing good speed. He was really good, remember, in the last half of last year, has made great strides. And you see on the extreme clutch on board with Kim Jane, but he really is a feature at this level of racing now, he's Patton. He really has come on in leaps and bounds towards the end of last season, and it looks at this point that he's carried it into the new season. A change of colours for Grant Johnson this year. Looking for further sponsorship after we've seen him for so many years in the orange and white of the Grow Fruit Juices team. But he is under the gun now. Oh, Gary Baxter, that engine's let go. So two races and two barbecues for his team. That's a tragedy for the Sage team because they always have a big presence here in the stands, big corporate presence. Gary Baxter, as you see up ahead, that is a huge let go. <coughs> Ugh. And Gary was the round winner here in Adelaide last year. He won't be this weekend. Back to the front, Cedars going for the move at nine. Johnson goes to cover, but he's too late. And the back of the Cedars car dancing around. One, two, three touches, gets him sideways. Get back on the inside, Grant, come on. Are you holding bias, what? No, I just want to see a good battle. As you said, it's a black car, it's a white car. Forward and hold and does it get any better? And the guy who's laughing to himself has got to be Gary McDonald. He's sitting back behind them. And you know what? A bit of trivia. Gary McDonald won the first ever Ute round here back in 2001. Yes, I was there. Do you know what? The round was mine. It was this, this corner exactly here. Turn 14, last corner of the last race. I fired it off into the grass and gave the round win to Gary McDonald. Ah, spoken like a former racing driver. is up for grabs in race two of the Yokohama V8 Ute Series on the streets of Adelaide. Ryle Harris has it, Leighton Cranbrook wants it, and Andrew Fisher, well, we're just hanging out in the passenger seat. The pacemaker on board there showed the attitude on these cars, particularly at the back end of the race, and you see Harris's car there squirming through turn 13. These cars, these Yokohama tyres are under immense pressure and load from these drivers. Three to go, three to go. Stronger than the brakes, stronger than the holds. Two holds in front. That's, that's the radio to Andrew Fisher giving him a little pump up for the last couple of laps. But the thing to remember is these Utes are really heavy. They are closer to two tonne than one tonne. That is massive. Oh, the Yokohama replay showing McFadden boom into the wall. That's 170 k's an hour. That's one way to get rid of a loose mirror too. Riding with the champ, Jack Ellsgood, DBA in-car camera. Looking ahead to Gary McDonald, who's searching for some real estate here. Grant Johnson's dropped back off our leader. There goes David Cedars. And the leader, the attitude on the back of the car, all of the cars, 170 k's an hour. And now look, Johnson feeling the pressure from McDonald, who has come from sixth place, now challenging for second. And at the top of the screen, you see contact between Harris and Leighton Cranbrook. The front left looks like a tie rod end is broken, and his race is done. He was trying to launch a move up the inside on Ryle. Here we are, in car. He goes to the right, Ryle goes to the right, bang! Not only has he moved across to the, the right, I think what's caught Leighton Cranbrook off guard is Ryle was on the brakes a little bit earlier than you may expect. I think that's late in the race, the brakes are hot, he just needs to get on the brakes a bit earlier. 